Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. Welcome to The Advocate on PLOS TV Africa and to a full house today. Our program today is a healthy mix of investigation, analysis, diagnosis and solutions. Treasure is looking into the state of trust in Nigeria. Her diagnosis holds a few surprises. Chuka takes us on a ride down familiar territory, whereas his analysis is anything but familiar. Liberus adds salt and pepper to the theater of absurdities we call the NDDC probe. His solution, believe it or not, he's calling for more fainters. And for Akene, um, she'll have some of us squirming in our seats as she undertakes a probe of our own. She investigates a certain Nigerian masculinity and the predatory instinct. No fainting, please. That brings us back to me. I'm examining the Igbo apprentice system and proffering it as a homegrown solution to what ails us. This edition promises to deliver in full with no loose ends. Join us after the break. They say, if it isn't broke, then why fix it? So today, I'm going to be talking about the Igbo apprentice system, or what we otherwise call the Omune economics. So if you're Igbo or have Igbo friends, I'm sure you know of a certain cousin or friend who at some point, either due to financial difficulties, usually, or due to some other factor, opted to go and start learning work as an apprentice trader with some established relation, either in any of the big cities in Nigeria, on Echa, Bar, Lagos, Newi, and so on. And how today that friend or cousin we used to look down on is now a very prosperous businessman or woman. There may be exceptions to this rule, but usually you find that they're all doing work pretty well these days. So the Igbo apprentice system, or Imo Afia as we call it, if you're Igbo, as we call it today, has become perhaps the most important social and economic factor which has helped the Igbos overcome the incredibly social and economic challenges that was brought on by the brutal civil war which devastated the region and cost over three million lives. Today, it is said that Newi, and in fact the whole of Anambra State in general, they have more millionaires per square kilometer than any other place in Africa. So, so why is that so? My advocacy this week examined the role of this system, this Imoafia system as we call it and calls for some kind of modernization of this, this system and formalization within the fabric of our national educational system. There's an interesting video, I don't know how many of you have seen it, of a TED talk by Robert Newitt, where he said that, and I quote him now, he says, I can say with almost certainty that the Igbo apprenticeship system that governs Alaba International Market is the largest business incubator platform in the world. Now, going further, another big friend of mine, someone I really admire, Professor Ndubisi Akekwe of techedia.com, describes this Umaya system as the best business framework in the world. According to Professor Akekwe, the Igbo apprenticeship system is characterized by creativity, innovation, passion, dedication, critical thinking, determination, resilience, and independence. Indeed, this attributes are essentially the basic building blocks for producing any successful entrepreneur, not just in Nigeria, but indeed anywhere in the world. Which is why I believe there is an urgent need for government, especially state governments, to recognize and encourage the system and even incorporate it into the formal education system as some type of a factory or trade school program. Whilst the Umaha system, Umaha system may have been driven by this Igbo mutual aid economy, something we call the Omunna Omunna economy, as a way that just especially after the Civil War to re reduce the suffering after the Civil War, and it does have some defects, chief of which Professor Ekekwe again described as a focus on preventing poverty 
by mass scaling opportunities for everyone, but it's simply not geared to building conglomerates or otherwise big businesses. So basically, the IMWA Health System, with the objective of settling the apprentices, end up in some ways reducing or dividing the market share of the master or ga for his trainees. According to uh, a friend, Professor Kekwe, he, he says that assuming the master holds 3% market share in a specific market, by the time he's done training his apprentice, he might be holding on to only 2% because he has to release 1% to his boys. Um, so this focus on reducing poverty, which heralded the Igbo apprentice system, is very different from the Western idea of business education, which focuses on the accumulation of market share. So this apparent defect may be the reason you will not see any big conglomerate in Aba or Nietzsche and, and so on and so forth. But the apprentice system itself is not designed to have just one Iroko, but many trees in the forest. And that's the beauty of it. But another challenge of this Umwaha system is the perception, despite its success, that is a program for persons who either due to lack of finance in the family or, is, or doesn't like education. So there's this perception persist that it's no longer as attractive for young people these days. Um, but the reality is that it promises to be if a plank on which we can help to reduce poverty, and we've seen this result in the Navy and other places in the East, uh, transfer skills, and indeed help us to, to create jobs. So that's basically um, what I want us to, to talk on this, on this show today. Yeah, um, I, I like your advocacy, but um, there's one thing I feel is missing. Um, you said we can use it for education, but you really, because for the first person listening to you, um, you really didn't now merge you know, the apprenticeship system, which is good, to how we can use it to enhance our education. You know, so for me, that's basically what um, I feel is missing. But um, um, also, uh, because I have a lot of Igbo friends who are, you know, all millionaires, you know, starting from, um, they started well out from this apprenticeship mm -hmm. system. Um, and then also, I also want to disagree that um, um, one of the disadvantages you talked about that, um, you know, you can't build conglomerate from it. That's mm -hmm. not true. Because also you have situations where, you know, the master, you know, would have trained more than 50 boys and the master keeps growing by investing in his, um, you know, um, uh, apprentice. Yeah. And, and so it gets to a time, the master becomes the big Iroko that all the other apprentices takes from. I know some people who, you know, they, their masters can do 50 containers from China but they manage to do one or two. And then sometimes they even key into the containers from the master, yeah. but yet they are sustaining theirs. You know, so, but the only difference why we think it is it cannot be big is because we are really not invested in it. If we invest in it, and, and for me, like, take education, for example. You, you train people, you take them to NYC, and it ends there, so you leave them. There's nothing to hold on to, unlike the Igbo apprenticeship. They train, and then they give you a platform to start something. Mm -hmm. and, and so, if we invest in it, like when you train from NYC, you divide your core members into groups. And so, okay, for these ones that are going into medical feed, this is how we're going to enhance you so that you become masters in this feed. For these ones that are going into okay, think... manufacturing or whatever, this is how we're going to en enhance you. Okay. So when you do that, before you know it, you would have grown, you know, smaller markets, and some persons would definitely be big markets. So mind you, some will branch out okay. to let, other let, things. Let's, let's uh, take, let's, let's, yeah, please go on. Just, just a quick one. Let, let, you know, I, mean, I, I agree with you that I may not. I mean, just a couple of words in this, in this, in this advocacy. But, but I, I touched on the fact that you, you can do what I call factory or trade schools. And that, that's a formalization yeah, aspect of it. And I think that, I mean, we didn't, I didn't have enough time okay, uh, to do that, but, but I yeah. Think, I think it's about time we remapped our knowledge uh, economy, as it were, in yeah. Nigeria. Uh, we've taken for so long, like I, I watched the TED talk you, you referred to in that advocacy, and I saw how this, this new it man um, did a comparison and, and then started from Adam Smith and you know, worked his way to the Igbo apprenticeship. And I really quite like that quote he, he talked about. So then, now we have someone out there who's saying this is fantastic. So then where do we go from here? I think 
the best thing for us is to change our curricula, our, our educational curricula. As Emeka has said, after NYC, then what? Then before NYC, we should, we should have by now stopped A for Apple because we, we really don't grow apples here. Yeah. So we should have more local mm -hmm. content mm -hmm. in our education curricula. Mm -hmm. And then going from there, this apprenticeship system, why don't we, I join him to, to, to demand and ask and request for this to be integrated. Okay, okay. I mean, you the know. other thing I'll say is, because I'm not even sure if it's, uh, yes, I get what you're saying, have more indigenous content. Right. But I think what the uh, apprenticeship system says to me is, it has to do with a robust training. It has to do with a training that instills discipline in the apprentice. Because I listened worse. to Cosmos Madika, and yes. one of the things he emphasized, and he even dared to say that if you have an apprentice and you have a university graduate, and even if you gave the university graduate a head start, the apprentice will catch up and overtake because they have that practical knowledge, they have that discipline that's been inculcated into them. And that's what I feel even in our education sector, take, even, take away the practical side. Take that robustness, that thoroughness <laughs> is lacking. And yeah. even when you come to our apprentices today, our apprentice today, like I had a young boy yesterday chain my tire. I saw this boy, he's not even up to my waist. I said, how old are you? He said he's 13. I was smiling at him. The guy finished changing my tire. I even dashed him extra thinking I was so impressed. Only to go down the road, the tire of Bafukad. And then the, <laughs> someone told me that that boy, that nut, I was lucky that the car didn't come but the boy is running around changing tires and he should be under a supervisor. Right. Off your mic, off your mic. But he's already, you know, he's already, he's already. It's okay, it's okay. Off your mic. So you know, it's okay. <laughs> 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 I'm just saying to myself, we, we're not thorough. You know, a lot of our artisans are not thorough. Yeah. They're too impatient, they're too greedy. Yeah, too. And that's why we'll go, go and get quickly. someone from Cameroon to tile our house. Because we don't follow the process through to the end. Which and that's do. what I, I want us to inculcate in anything we do. Sorry, yes. Chuka. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. They, they complete the cycle abroad. Mm. I'm sorry, I'm outside Nigeria, mm. and um, that's our African, yeah, West African uh, neighbors. Said. Yes, and we don't. So, um, but yes, I agree with what everybody has said about changing our curriculum or at least expanding it to include something homegrown. Yeah. We're trying to do it in architecture as well, where we're trying to, you know, we're we're not we're not we're not going to behave like we don't know how to do buildings, you know. We do, we do, you know, so. Yeah. So anyhow, um, apprenticeship speaks of stewardship and a good stewardship is surely a basis for trust. Treasure has more to say on the matter um, after this break. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. That's I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.